There was a time when Northwestern Loudoun was a seasonal camping ground for Native Americans come to trade with each other in the spring and in the fall near the point of rocks on the Potomac. But then came the English land agents and their surveyors just after 1700, and in 1731 the first knot of settlers came. They were Germans, not English, and they arrived from the west, from the Shenandoah Valley, not from the east. But they came for good, and to this day, Northwestern Loudoun is still called the German settlement. When Loudoun was settled, the eastern portion of Loudoun was settled by Tidewater Gentry, who sent up absentee farmers to govern their farms to create wealth through tobacco. But northern Loudoun was settled by settlers that came from Pennsylvania. This was the immigrant colony, and it soon filled up. If you went further west in Pennsylvania, you ran into Indian attacks, and so you moved towards Maryland, and central Maryland soon filled up, and then you moved into the Shenandoah Valley, and then you popped over the mountains into Loudoun County. When those first Germans came into Loudoun in 1731, they settled near the little Loudoun village of Morrisonville in north central Loudoun County today. They were German Reformed, they call themselves, Evangelical German Reformed. It's sort of a German form of Puritan. They were Calvinists, serious people. These Germans came from the Palatinate. That's the rolling low hills of Germany just across from the northeastern corner of France. They came here not only for religious freedom, but as well because they were having economic difficulties in the part of Germany where they lived, because there had been significant warfare in the part of Germany where they lived beginning in 1688. There was one thing very special about Loudoun. Not only was there land available, and you could get it from the Earl of Tankerville or from the Lord Loudon for three lifetime lease for the time you lived in it, your son lived in it, and your grandson lived in it. But also, the land looked a good deal like home. There were two waves of Germans that came into Loudon County, that first wave that came in the 1730s and 40s. And then, after the French and Indian War, in 1765, a second wave came, and they were bigger than the first. The second wave of Germans were Lutherans, and to this day we can see where they settled. Because today, between the hills over towards Harpers Ferry, there's a Lutheran church. Where Morrisonville is today, there's a Lutheran church. In Lovettsville, there's a large Lutheran church, the Mother Church. And in Taylorstown, there's a Lutheran church. And so you see, by the location of these churches, and by the German Evangelical Reformed Church, St. James, in the middle of Lovettsville today, just where the German settlers settled. These people were described by most as simple people. They came with a desire to work hard, to have children, to have a prosperous farm, but wealth did not seem to be their goal if they could worship their God and live a comfortable life. And so the homes they built were simple. They were made of log almost exclusively. The kind of thing we think of as almost a Lincoln log type structure with chinking in between the logs. And almost always to satisfy the Earl of Tankerville or the Lord Loudon, the size of house was 16 feet by 20 feet, which they built, it consisted of a great room with a big fireplace down below where the family did almost everything and up above, a one-room or sometimes two-room sleeping loft. The parents often separated themselves with a simple board wall. The farmers were good at what they did. They learned to rotate their crops. They learned to use manure. They used land plaster, which we call liming today. And all of these things made sure that what they grew, grew in abundance. They did something that neither the Quakers nor 
the English gentry who settled eastern Loudoun did, and that is they also brought animals to graze, sheep and cattle. And the rolling hills of northwestern Loudoun were ideal for that to complement their grain crops. They tended to settle small farms, 100 to 200 acres, and the idea of a German farmer using a slave was almost unheard of. They used their sons, they used their daughters, and they were absolutely fiercely loyal to the idea that a man can do for himself. And today when we look at the farmhouses, they dot the countryside in the area around Lovettsville. We find that they're almost always nestled into the side of a hill. They face in such a way that the sunshine fills their homes and that the winds usually face a wall or a chimney and seldom a window. And we look at them and marvel at their intelligence, at their ability to use so little fuel to heat a house through the winter. And yet, their almost fanatical devotion to the log house had people wondering as time went by. We went through the American Revolution and well beyond. And in 1853, just a decade before the Civil War, mapmaker Yardley Taylor, a Quaker from near Lincoln, he would say, a comment about them that's kind of interesting. He noticed that many old log houses that are barely tolerable are in use by persons abundantly able to build better ones in the German settlement. While economy and a desire for a competency may prompt us to suffer inconvenience for the want of better buildings, we ought not to allow this to go too far, he commented. And in many ways that frugality seems to typify the German settler. Just before the Civil War, there were still a few people in Lovettsville and in the German settlement that spoke German. But times were changing, and one of the biggest changes came in 1861, when the war between the states began. Virginians were allowed to vote on whether Virginia should secede and join the Southern Confederacy. When Lovettsvillians went to vote, they voted a firm 325 against secession to 46-4 and let everyone know that they believed that loyalty to the union that George Washington had created was still terribly important to them. Many of them, by 1862, joined the only union unit that was raised in the current day state of Virginia, the Loudoun Rangers. I will tell you that the Loudoun Rangers had many an adventure, and oftentimes they faced off against John Singleton Mosby, the Confederate partisan ranger who operated in Loudoun and Fauquier counties. Mosby's men were often coming up to the German settlement for the good corn they raised to feed Mosby's many horses. And there were others who took advantage of the Unionist settlers as well, including the infamous bandito John Mobley, who lived up near Harper's Ferry in the Between the Hills district. But Union troops came through in late November, early December 1864, and because the settlers were being forced to sell their corn to Mosby's men, Union troops went through with a torch and just about every barn in the German settlement got that torch and the livestock of the German settlers was taken off by Union troops. And so despite their loyalty to the Union, their very own government seemed to be their undoing and yet many a German settler cheerfully allowed it to happen to keep Mosby out. Federal troops came and encamped just west of Levittsville near where Woodland School would be built sometime after the war. There were 2,000 of them under General Devon. They were cavalry and they camped and they watched the river crossings and they made moves into Loudoun County looking for Mosby. For people in Levittsville, it was a great curiosity and perhaps a bit of protection. Levittsville had started out as Thrasher's store and it became Newtown in 1824. But by the 1840s, 20 years before the Civil War, it was becoming known as Lovettsville, named for David Lovett, a Scottish storekeeper who also ran the post office. It was incorporated as a town in 1842, although the type of incorporation it had changed significantly in its later incorporation as we now know it in the 1870s. As time went on, the German settlers mixed with their neighbors you started to see strayed Quakers who became Methodists and strayed German Reform or Lutheran who became Methodists and would go to the same church together and would soon be married. You saw primitive Baptists coming in, Presbyterians. By the 20th century, Brunswick had grown as a huge railroad center for the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad 
and here was Lovettsville and the German settlement with ready and willing labor just across the river. Many a farm boy crossed the toll bridge, went to Lovettsville, and became a railroad man for life, commuting back and forth across the toll bridge each day with a lunchbox in hand. Well, Lovettsville uh, was a very quaint little town one time a day. And the majority of it still is until we had this rapid growth. But being uh, born and raised uh, in this area and living uh, closely to the town, uh, we had a lot there that was different from the other towns. We had uh, uh, several film stations, I think three or four at one time, and the uh, uh, grocery stores, a dry goods store. Uh, the people, uh, I think practically everyone knew who everybody else was. And the standard of living, uh, uh, worked hard, daylight till dark. Farming in this area was, was one of the main sources. Uh, railroading was another big thing for the town of Lovettsville. When I was uh, growing up, uh, we were a very close-knit family. Lovettsville was a very close-knitted community. Church was a main factor. We was raised that way. My mother brought us up that way. And uh, at the time, transportation was you walked. If you wanted to go to church, you had to walk. And each year, Mount Olivet Methodist Church had an all-day picnic, which was uh, the whole community in the area was invited to this picnic. All the other churches around was invited, but Mount Olivet had it up here at Mount Olivet Picnic Woods, right up here at the Short Hill Mountain. When I was growing up in Lovettsville, our lives probably surrounded the church, or the church surrounded us. I remember so very well uh, being uh, a child in the St. James Church this would be the German Reformed Church, the third building, by the way, that uh, the German um, Reformed folks built. Uh, and as a, as a little girl, I used to enjoy so very much going to church on Sunday morning. And as I said, everything was centered around that. We had our covered dish dinners, we uh, hymn fests and everything. There really wasn't that much to do in those days. The records, uh, the church records are written in German. Uh, we still have those books in, in our church. Um, this, this church was, as I said, the third facility, the other two being located in the uh, below the community center in the old Reformed Cemetery. And the first church was a log church, the second church was a brick one, and some of those bricks, so I'm told, are in the church on Broadway uh, in our town. And this, of course, is directly connected with the Germans who came down from Pennsylvania in 1732. The congregation began at that time. That was the beginning of Lovettsville. Some of the stones, tombstones in the cemetery are of German descent, as well as some of the tombstones out at the New Jerusalem Lutheran Church um, is, are in German. When I was a child, I remember well uh, a German tradition. Um, it perhaps was a bit scary to children, but we had Kris Kringles, they were called, who came to different homes. And uh, the, as, as well as I remember, they pounded on the door. And you went to the door, and there were these people in costume, mostly men. These Chris Kingler, Kringlers were dressed in long coats, very dark, uh, and hats. They had hats, and I believe they brought candy um, to those, those people whose homes they visited. When I started the school, I went to a one-room school called Woodland. 
We had one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven grades in one room. I went there for one year, and then they started busing. They had buses, and then, of course, we walked from the home place to the school, which was approximately another four miles to get to the school, one way. And then the buses started coming in approximately three miles from the home place. And then we went from there to a high school, a grade school, and then we got into the high school. And that's one of the big changes. Education has been a big factor. Louisville was a little bit distinctive to me when I was growing up. One thing was that we had to walk to school. And we had grades 1 through 12 there. But then eventually, Loudoun County High School was built. So then the, the elementary school was 1 through 7. So we lost our distinction that way also. Then when we went to county, we just didn't fit in. Um, Leesburg was, was an unknown place for us because we used to go to Brunswick and Frederick for all of our recreation and things like that. Then when I was a senior, it changed again. I had to complete my senior year at Leesburg in the fall of 62 and 63. But then Valley opened up in 62, 63 with the juniors being the first class who would graduate in 64. So it seemed like that, that people from Lovettsville just bounced around from school to school and we had to fit in, which um, was fine. I attended Lovettsville High School until my sophomore year and my junior and senior year I, I went to Leesburg which was Loudoun County High School, which was the consolidated high school for the county. Four high schools went to, to this facility. And we were kind of, that was the first time that we were thrown into um, a mix of, of students uh, who came from all parts of the county. And we felt kind of isolated, I guess, when we first went there, but made lots of nice friends. Lovelace has changed since I grew up in, uh, I guess, the late 40s. We used to know everyone. We could name every house as we went uptown. I also delivered papers for the Washington Star. And you had to go around, meet the people, and collect, and got, got to know people from a personal standpoint. And another way was my dad was mayor for 25, 25 years. So I had to watch out what I did <laughs> because he'd be the first to know about it. But we had a lot of um, buildings in Lovelessville that had gone by the wayside. One was McLean's Grocery Store, and we thought that was big. And then, then when they got the variety shop um, put on, that, that was even bigger for us. We used to go in there and buy tiny grape soda for, I think, five cents and try to drink it down in one gulp, which was what the kids used to do. But then um, it also became known as Hickman Corner, where I grew up. Uh, Charlie Waddell, the senator, senior senator, my dad became great friends. He was instrumental in getting a grant for the town for water and sewage. And then we, the thing was at Heckman's Corner, we had the um, post office, the new one there. We had highs come in, which was, which was a great thing. We had the bank and we had Village Inn. So we said that, that Heckman's got everything because dad, dad was mayor there. But um, some, some of the buildings that were there and still are there today would be the game club. It was built back in the 50s and every Friday night we'd go there and have, I was a Boy Scout, had training sessions there and after that the big thing was the dances by Johnny Norton and Free Stater. And they would do the Paul Joneses and all this and what made the community come, come together. I fell in love with a house in the German settlement that has become very special to me. I now operate it as a bed and breakfast. It's at George's Mill, and it's been in the family for eight generations. It was my husband's home when he grew up, and as I, the first time I saw it as a young girl when he brought me here, I just thought it was so special. It was particularly special because it belonged to uh, his family for all, those, all the people that in his family, the Georges, that John George was the first one came over here 
in the 1700s and had a little cabin across the road. And then when his great-grandfather, Samuel George, decided to build this house here, uh, all the family moved here. And he had, he had seven children, so it had to be a rather large house. The first time I saw it, uh, he brought me here as his bride. And I met his family, and they were so special. And they just all were so family-oriented and so, and so anxious to keep the farm as it, as it was, as, as it always was. So when we decided to do the bed and breakfast, we wanted to not change it, but to keep it just exactly the way it was, bring it back to the way that they first, when they first built it. And that is what we've tried to do. Uh, most of the furniture in the house has been here since the house was built. A bed and breakfast is a wonderful way to preserve an old house and to use it for really good purposes. People love to come here and enjoy. They tell me that they are, feel like they're stepping into history. People are attracted to uh, Loudoun County because of their nice, beautiful landscape. We have uh, nice streams, and we have nice rolling fields and open space for people to enjoy when they travel through the county. The uh, German area here in Lovettsville has a good architecture of the double front door home and many log homes which are still preserved in some of their original context. When I came out here, this is what really attracted me, is I saw an opportunity to help preserve the uh, historical integrity of the area and keep the vision that I saw available to those who will still be coming. Um, unfortunately, many of the buildings are disappearing, and the sad thing about it is that once it's gone, it's gone, and no one knew it existed unless there's a photograph or a documentation for it. Um, I would like to help preserve the area and keep the integrity of, for future generations to see what it was that attracted many people to be here today and 200 years ago. In keeping with the German tradition, and as you know, the town of Lovettsville is known as the German settlement, we have an annual Oktoberfest celebration, which is always the last Saturday in September. And we have just wonderful German food, dance, entertainment, the Washington Singerbund uh, performs, the Alta Kameraden Band, and we just look forward to this every year. I would hope that the sense of the German settlement will not be lost as a result of the new construction in town. We are trying very, very hard to make sure that the old town uh, meshes with the new town. The developers are building a town square which means that the citizens can walk across a street instead of a highway to get from uh, one side of the, the town to the other. We started out many years ago with 99 acres in the town. In 1970, a big annexation occurred in the town of Lovettsville and we went up to 496 acres. And since that time, we have brought the retirement community into our town uh, so now we have properties consisting of 525 acres. We would like to concentrate on preserving the old part of the town by identifying the older structures in town and making sure that the uh, new people as well as of course the older people continue to get the sense that we are an old town uh, which began in 1732 and we would like to, once again, as I said, have the two to mesh. We don't want to create a new town. We just want the town of Lovettsville. Many of the old German names still exist in Lovettsville. You could see axe lines and bakers, beamers and boyers and coopers, comfers, Everharts, Amix, Fries, Frollies, Grubs, Heaters and Hickmans, still descendants of those early German settlers. And there is one more thing. No one can say that even to this day, the descendants of the German settler are flashy. The town is still quiet, simple, clean, proud. The two key churches in town, which is now St. James on the main street of town, and the Lutheran church just south of town that's lit each night with a searchlight to show its steeple. The community is still oriented to other German settlements in Maryland more than it is to Leesburg or to Percival, except to go to school. And it is interesting to notice that some of the traditions of the German settlers remain, 
There are Christmas traditions, marriage traditions, that are decidedly different from what the English settlers had. And if you listen to a Lovett's Villian, and you catch him at the right moment, he'll still say fish, when most people say fish. Fish, almost as if it was F-I-S-C-H. And you'll still say bush, for a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. B-U-S-C-H. The German in the Lovett's Villian, in the member of the German settlement, lives on. <laughs>